This is what wind sounds like on Mars. The sound beamed back to Earth from NASA's InSight rover. Six months ago, it touched down on the surface of the red planet, steered by NASA engineers tens of millions of kilometers away. The non-profit Explore Mars, made up of engineers, policy experts and former astronaut Buzz Aldrin, is holding the Humans to Mars Summit to figure out how to get astronauts there as well. I would, I would like to say, when we talk about the NASA budget... NASA's administrator Jim Bridenstine told the conference that the U.S. is aiming to be back on the moon by 2024, before shooting for Mars. NASA wants to build a gateway that can orbit the moon and serve as base camp for astronauts traveling to the red planet. The Trump administration's space policy promises to do it by partnering with the private sector. We bring um, advanced manufacturing, um, streamlined uh, development of both hardware and software, um, a lot of operations experience for uncrewed vehicles, for example. And then NASA brings just this wealth, you know, decades of human deep space, space exploration experience. But not everybody believes NASA's aim of getting astronauts to Mars by 2033 is realistic. Mars has a much longer orbit around the sun than the Earth, meaning missions can only go ahead in certain years. You have to be at a position where you can you know, catch up to Mars, if you will. And so there's um, 33, 35, 37, two-year intervals where it's actually feasible to get to Mars. The purpose of our report was to say, well, take it easy. It's not going to happen in 33. It can happen later in the decade. As NASA works on how to send astronauts to the moon and beyond, there's at least one obstacle back on Earth. The Trump administration has asked for extra funding to lay the groundwork for its ambitious space policy. But members of the US Congress will now decide whether to approve that funding and press the ignition button for missions to Mars. Giles Gibson, CGTN, Washington.